Um, first off, can you tell us um, what is participatory modeling? Participatory modeling, in my view, is kind of a new way in which groups of people can make decisions. Um, a lot of the problems that we face uh, in society these days are complex and what we would call um, wicked problems, which means that there's not one clear solution. And participatory modeling is a way that we can rely on computational models and uh, stakeholders and different types of scientists and different types of managers can come together and kind of collaboratively structure these very complex, wicked problems and try to make a decision about how to move forward. Uh, traditionally, uh, a lot of the ways in which a lot of these types of problems were, were handled in the past uh, were experts, it was just experts involved in this, and they would create a computational model or a statistical model and we would use that to figure out how to move forward, how to make a decision. And participatory modeling is different um, from just expert-based models in that it's inclusive and it's collaborative. And increasingly, the experiences of a range of different stakeholders at the local scale uh, are needed to use that information and incorporate it into kind of computational models to make decisions. Cool. Um, can you talk about what you're trying to accomplish working with the community foundation and the residents? Yeah, in, in this particular project, uh, we are trying to facilitate a dialogue and also understand the community's voice. When I say communities, I'm really talking about um, the residents' perspective as they deal with this, the Flint water crisis. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty currently as how the residents are going to be affected. Uh, on the state level, there's uncertainty about what management actions they should take to try to deal with this. On the federal level, there's a question about how to monitor this into the future. And so um, the city of Flint has really collapsed a little bit in, in the wake of the Flint water crisis. And so there's a question about how to understand what these problems are and pick solutions about how to move forward. So the project uh, that we've been running over the last several months is trying to capture that community perspective so that it can be communicated across all of the groups dealing with the Flint water crisis. Um, can you talk about some of the problems or difficulties you've run into during this process? Yeah, well, initially um, we were definitely outsiders um, to the Flint water issue and not surprisingly, and it was, it was great and exciting, um, you know, when the Flint water crisis became really, was on the public radar nationally, a lot of groups moved in to try to help. Um, what we found from initial conversations uh, working with Flint residents and the Community Foundation of Greater Flint was that uh, people were rushing in to help. They already kind of had a solution on what the problem was and what should happen in mind when they came in. Um, and that idea of the problem and solution from these community groups that were rushing into Flint didn't necessarily reflect the problem and solution that the residents um, had identified. So whereas it was very heartening in one sense that a lot of people came in to help, they wanted to help in very specific ways. And before um, I think that you can really understand how the community should move forward, you have to understand how everybody is conceptualizing and structuring the problem. Um, so we were definitely outsiders when we, when we first started working. Uh, luckily, we've been able to work with the Community Foundation of Greater Flint to uh, build a trusting relationship with a lot of community groups and residents. Um, and so at this point, uh, I think that it's definitely a partnership. But initially, we were just some Johnny-come-lately kind of rushing in to try to help the residents of Flint. But it, it's been a very rewarding process. Um. Can you talk about um, what you hope to accomplish with this or what benefits you see can uh, come from this? So the, the benefits I see coming from this uh, are really in terms of organizing all of the knowledge and all of the uncertainty that uh, is in Flint at this point in time. Um, there's a question, it's a very complex issue and how to deal with that issue is not necessarily straightforward. So. Participatory modeling in this particular context allows people to structure the nature of what's going on in Flint from the perspective of the community foundation and community groups, from the perspective of residents, from the perspective of the state, from the perspective of uh, responders who are working in Flint. 
And we would like to be able to develop models from all those groups about how they understand the nature of this problem and share them across groups so everybody can kind of have a shared language about how to deal with this problem and what the nature of the problem is. So hopefully by sharing those models we can get a little bit of consensus about what the issues are and how to move forward as a community as the community rebuilds. Unless, what do you think the potential of this, what, what is the potential of this method? The potential of this method is really uh, about uh, supporting collective action. So not surprisingly, uh, it, it happened in Hurricane Katrina, it happens in a, in a lot of events. The, the situation in Flint is not necessarily unique to Flint. It is most recently, but um, this will probably happen again and it certainly happened in the past. And what you have is um, some sort of natural or unnatural disaster and you have factions break out that all have specific ways of understanding the problem and solution. And what we're trying to do with, with this project uh, is, is break down those communication barriers between groups uh, to better understand the nature of the problem and how to move forward.